Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to the Reselling Rebels podcast. I believe this is episode 4. I'm already starting to lose track of the numbers at episode 4. So it's going to be very interesting when we get to episode 30, 40, 50, etc. We'll just see how we go on. Anyway, so today's topic is what do we enjoy about reselling? I've got almost a full page on this topic, so it's going to be a nice one. It's going to be a little bit more positive today as well. Not to say that episodes in the past have been completely negative, um, but of course they've been kind of centred a little bit around getting people over negativity and stuff like that. So they kind of have had to focus on a little bit more negativity by default. Um, But today's episode is going to be a very much positive And uh, the next episode, episode 5, will be building a business from the ground up or building a business from scratch. And when I say business, I generally mean a reselling business, so that's what I'm going to be focusing around. So, as always, if you have any uh, questions on that, if you have any tips that you would like me to kind of voice on the podcast for you, for maybe people out there who are wanting to get started in reselling, centered around that topic, um, then please do drop them down below this video, or as I've mentioned in the past, you can message me over on Instagram. So, just once again there, the next topic will be building a reselling business from the ground up. So, first point I wanted to discuss on today's podcast is simply as we start to address this question of what do we enjoy about reselling, I wanted to discuss simply how cool it is to buy and sell something. So obviously there'll be a lot of people who are watching this who are regulars to the channel and who have been reselling for maybe a number of years. And uh, I'm sure that you guys have, when you were younger, been one of those kids who has sold stuff in the playground, whether it be sweets or chocolate or crisps or fizzy drinks or whatever. It might not have even been that. It might have been something else. It might have been some sort of toy or something. Um, but if we, if I try and take you back, if we get into a little bit of a nostalgia trip here for a moment, if I try and take you back to that moment, if, if you were one of those children in the playground who used to do that, let's just take each other back now and think about those moments where maybe you were going to, um, I don't know, a local saving supermarket or whatever it may be. I mean, what springs to mind for me is something like Quality Save. You go to somewhere like that, or maybe you just even go to your paper shop or something, and you buy them there, and you're excited because you're buying X number of these sweets or chocolate bars or whatever it may be. And then you go into school, you're putting them in your bag, and then you're going down there, and then you're putting a tiny little bit on top, or maybe even quite a little bit on top, depending on you know how cheap you're getting them for and all the rest of it. But you go down, and people are crowding around you, and of course, because in the school ground, uh, generally, I mean, we did have one vending machine in school, actually. Um, we weren't allowed to use it, but people did use it anyway, obviously. Um, but generally, it's a bit more of a monopoly. It's a little bit more of a kind of... Um, isolated marketplace because of course most schools yeah okay you might be able to get the odd bit of chocolate or whatever but you're not going to be able to get a huge amount of it you're not going to be able to get loads of it from there so and as I say in some schools you might not be able to get it period so you're then opening yourself up to kind of having a little bit of a monopoly so everyone's crowding around you and they're buying things from you and you're loving it and there's just that thrill there of course that's buying and selling on a personal level but you still do get a similar thrill to that uh, maybe just in a slightly different way uh, when you're selling online I never it might surprise a few people but I never really sold a lot in school I wasn't really one of those people I did sell a few bits I did have a time where I was selling a few bits and my um weapon of choice shall we say uh it's probably not the right word or the right phrase but I'm going to use it anyway uh my weapon of choice was mints funnily enough and I did it in a very very odd way as you might think um I got these mints from somewhere like quality save as I say probably paid 25 pence a pack or 20 pence a pack or something and then I would I would open the pack it sounds really weird but I knew that I would get the most money back if I did this right 
So I open the pack and then I would sell them to people. Oh my God, it sounds so funny. I would sell them to people for five pence a mint, right? And obviously, because I'd worked out with like roughly 25 mints in a pack or whatever, I would get the most return from that. And people would buy them, but I remember it was only a very short-lived thing. It wasn't particularly, it wasn't something I did uh, for ages and ages and ages. But were people in our school who did buy and sell stuff? Um, it wasn't... It wasn't really prolific, but I do remember that that was, that was the case. So it's quite funny and it's quite nice and obviously quite nostalgic when we go back and just uh, discussing the basic buying and selling and just genuinely how cool it is. Let's take ourselves back, as I say, and just think about how cool it is, the basic process of buying and selling. So, yeah, I did just want to touch on that because it, it, it really, that gets us back to the basic and, and it shows us, really, oh, yeah, that's that's one big reason why we enjoy it. It is just genuinely quite cool to do. So, next I wanted to discuss taking an income into your own hands controlling how you will live your life now this is not to say you can control the amount of income you can get but you do have more control over how you earn it so of course you know when you're in a, a normal job you don't have really much control over your income of course you can try and work your way up the ladder get promotions all the rest of it um you can try and i don't know at some point maybe ask for a pay rise if you're doing a really really good job and you know your boss is obviously uh, very proud of the job you're doing and stuff you can maybe try and uh, take that leap of faith and, and ask for a pay rise or something or uh, you know, as I say, you just have to kind of find another job that pays better or go into a different field, you know, retrain or whatever it may be. Um, but you never really have a real complete control of your income. I mean, I suppose if you're quite open minded and you don't mind moving from job to job, then yes, you do have quite a good control of your income because you're not limited by the fear of losing the current job you've got because you're just open minded and you're just going to right. well, I'll take what comes and all the rest of it so therefore you can be um, a little bit more in control of your income but a lot of people need to have the security of having a job these days so they they then do build up this fear of, of going to a different job because obviously they've got a family to feed or whatever it may be so therefore their income is a little bit kind of stifled in a way um, because they, they can't move on uh, or they feel a little bit stuck in one way um, but yeah when we are reselling, when we're in any sort of business, we can take our income into our own hands somewhat. Now, of course, this requires work, this requires dedication, this requires um, outside-the-box thinking if you want to really scale things up, if you want to do things in different ways, if you want to bring uh, you know different things to the table. Um, obviously, if you do bring different skills to the table, then you are going to be able to increase that income. If even in a reselling business or whatever business you're in, um, if you don't sort of bring new things to the table, if you don't think outside the box, then you won't be able to take your income um, into your own hands as much as those entrepreneurs or business people who do take those risks or think outside the box will be able to. They'll be able to take it more greatly into their own hands and, uh, of course, earn more in the process. So, as I say, you can't really control how much income you're going to get. The only way you can control that really is doing more work. But when we sell on eBay, as we're all aware, um, just because you're listing more, yeah, okay, you might be selling more. It might be true. But to be honest, this year it's been very, very odd for me. Despite me listing more, um, it's not really having a direct positive impact. There's certain times where it is... But it's not having this wow impact. Um, and I think a lot of people have touched on this this year. And I won't kind of rant too much about this or anything. But it does seem a lot of people are facing the same issue. They're listing, listing, listing. But the sales are very, very sporadic still. And don't get me wrong. eBay has always been sporadic. eBay's always been up and down. Amazon's always been up and down. But it does seem that it's even more so this year. Um, and therefore, the only thing you really can do is keep listing and keep doing things and be active on your store and all the rest of it. And if you would like any tips, I've done. Uh, I've got a playlist on my channel called eBay Courses. 
and I've done loads of different courses on various different ways to increase your sales, increase your views, all the rest of it, um, and you know all all different manner of of courses and stuff basically. So if you want more information on that in particular, then you can go and have a look at those courses. But yeah, so there are things we can do, but that doesn't guarantee sales. We can never guarantee ourselves sales. We can be pretty sure, we can be even maybe 90-95% sure that if we're listing X number of items, we're going to get X number of sales, but we can never 100% uh, control the income completely uh, and if we were to do that we would just have to be in a regular job because that's the only way you're going to completely control the income and even then it's not completely safe because you know your job is never completely safe nothing in life is ever 100% completely safe because the element of uh, the biggest element in life for me is change and, and things change all the time so you, I mean, you can see this generally in life, in, in overarching themes of life, which are, you know, life and death and things like that and relationships and uh, well, just all, all that sort of stuff kind of goes hand in hand with this idea of change and that things aren't completely safe. It's just this illusion that people manifest in their minds that they think, oh, well, you know, this job is going to be safe, you know, it's a safe bet and, and maybe it's not going to be safe. So you've always got to kind of think about that. So, moving on now, I wanted to talk about something. I uh, did an Instagram post actually centered around this topic, um, and Andrew actually got in touch on a comment, and he basically just mentioned that for him, it's the full of the chase. So, you know, going out there to car boots, charity shops, uh, boots, uh, not boots, uh, car boots, charity shops, and auctions, I was going to say. And uh, and just trying to find these items, whether it be these big gems that you get uh, worth over 100 quid or 200 quid, 300 quid, or whether it's just simply 10, 20, 30, 40 pound items, whatever it may be, it's that full of the chase not knowing what you're going to find every time. You will never know what you're going to find. That's the, that's the kind of a real beauty of it. You will not know what you're going to find, and that makes it worth doing. If you if you knew what you're going to find, it would be boring because there would be no chase there because you know you're going to find X number of items or these these specific items. But because you don't know what you're going to find, it makes it worth coming back each time, and that makes us more motivated to do it. So yeah, Andrew is very very uh, correct there. It, you know, it's full of the chase that wanting to. Keep going back to places because you never know it. That that, that one thing uh, that you can pick up for a pound and that's worth a hundred pound or something might be there today, and it might be something so cool. Not necessarily just the profit, but the item itself might just be rare and cool and interesting. It might be some sort of antique. You know, for me, it might be some sort of antique that. Um, is you know just so so cool and uh, it's just like a, a once in a maybe not a once in a lifetime but a once in a few seasons kind of find um, and and it's you know it's just so interesting uh, and then for other people it might be some sort of vintage video games console that's quite rare or it might be I don't I really don't know some sort of plush toy that's really really rare and uh, and and obviously that really kind of gives us that thrill and keeps keeps us going with reselling. So, yeah, I wanted to touch a little bit. Uh, I know I've obviously done uh, work structure and I've done about balancing business and social time, so I don't want to touch on this too much, but I just wanted to mention it as a, as a little bit of a, an addition to this topic and to answering this question as well. Uh, so I wanted to touch a little bit on flexibility of working hours. So, you know, obviously, why do we enjoy reselling? Or what do we enjoy about reselling? Well, the flexibility has to come into that. And uh, I've actually put a little bit of an example down here. Now, I am not a father myself, so I can't really comment on this. So I am doing a little bit of a assuming here. So forgive me if I am uh, I am assuming in a slightly uh, incorrect way. But I think that it's fairly uh, correct, this. So I put mums slash dads... Uh, doing reselling full time will find it easier to organize their children. Now, I don't mean in an overarching life sense uh, in terms of, oh, doing reselling full time, you know, I mean that it's easy to organize your kids and all the rest of it. I am well aware that, let's say, 
uh, if your kids are off sick or if they're on the holidays, it's actually going to be quite a nuisance um, to have them around and you won't get much work done. But I mean it in the sense of, let's say that you've got a full-time job and uh, you've got kids and you can't pick your children up from school, right? Because you, you've got a full-time job. But with reselling, you've got that flexibility because, you, you know, you've not got anyone there. You've not got a boss there saying, uh, oh, you need to work from nine to five or anything like that. You can go down to the school, you can pick them up and you can bring them back. You can take them there in the morning. If they've got doctor's appointments or dentist appointments or whatever it may be, you've got the flexibility to get them there and take them there, etc. Uh, because... You're not fi fixed to this kind of uh, working schedule of a uh, quote unquote kind of thing, proper job. Um, so, yeah, I don't mean it in the sense that people who are reselling will automatically find it easier to, you know, organize the children and stuff. It's still going to be incredibly hard because having kids and obviously... Um, helping your kids grow up I suppose and and nurturing and all the rest of it is going to be hard no matter what you know that still stands uh, but certainly just this kind of flexibility of working hours may help a little bit with that so I just wanted to touch upon that slightly and of course if there's any other reasons uh, there might be other certain reasons that you can't particularly work in certain hours then doing reselling you have the flexibility to avoid those hours and work different hours etc if you just genuinely like working later at night um and you want to you know not work in the day then you can do that etc so yeah i just wanted to touch on that a little bit uh next i wanted to talk about variety so, uh, you know, being able to sell different, unique, cool, and sometimes actually really rare items as well. Um, of course, as the old saying goes, variety is the spice of life. Um, and it, it's quite interesting when you explore this. I, I always think of my grandma when I think of variety or change. Because she, well, even to this day actually, but basically when I used to go around my grandma's, this is my, I've, I've got two sets of grandparents, but this is one of them anyway. But I used to go around my grandma's. My granddad would never be there or hardly ever be there because he'd be out um, fishing or he'd be out doing some sort of business thing or whatever. And even to this day, he's still working like crazy. It, it's just mad, really, considering he's, I think he's 77 this year or something. Um, but I always think of my, my grandma and I want to touch upon the fact that you know, where, when, and this relates back to reselling, it's just kind of a experiential um, example, I suppose, I'm calling on of, of my own experience, uh, and then I can relate it back to reselling, but I would go around my grandparents after school, and my grandma would always give me, sometimes it would be a similar piece of fruit, or sometimes it would be a different piece of fruit, she'd sometimes give me uh, different bits of chocolate and all the rest of it and she'd always mix it up you know she'd always every now and then maybe once a week twice a week she'd give me something different whether it just be a different piece of fruit or whether it just be a um you know a different piece of chocolate or something and even now obviously i see my grand uh, grandparents fairly regularly still and she always gives me something different you know she might come round with something for me a little treat or something and she'll give me something different like pretty much every every time she sees me um and it's that kind of change that variety that is nice that is variety is the spice of life essentially so relating that back to reselling that kind of has always given me this mentality that changes i mean i used to actually deplore change it was deplorable i hated i really didn't like change um but as I've got older, I've started to get with it a little bit more and, and see the, the real benefits to change and, and how it can be such a good thing, really. And when we apply this to reselling, we can see when we do sell different items, it's more it just is genuinely more exciting because if you're selling the same item over and over and over,
There's a lot of positives to wholesale. For one, the scalability. For two, the fact that you don't need to worry about, you know, get you don't need to worry about getting individual items of stock. You can just literally stock a load of stuff and that's that and that's done. Um, also, you could even argue that the postage may be a bit easier with wholesale because you've got one standard size of item. And then you can just buy in X number of uh, a certain size box or a certain size jiffy bag. And then you pop them in the jiffy or you pop them in the box and that's that done. To me, that doesn't appeal with my personality. Um, I would still say that I'd quite like, and I've tried to explore this a new, numerous, a time, numerous times, I would like an avenue for wholesale. So I'd like to do ho like a very small... Uh, section of wholesale on the side of my business to kind of just give me something ticking over um, that's a little bit more easy to deal with let's say and a little bit more scalable and stuff but then my main business would be still selling uh, general bits of, and bobs of items because I don't know what I'm going to find I don't know when I'm going to go out like we all don't we don't know when we go to a car boot when we go to an auction we don't know what we're going to find and that's exciting now, of course, to some people's personalities, this might not work. They may It may just be the fact that they really get some sort of thrill out of um, doing wholesale or doing um, just standard items, essentially, or, or being in one specific niche, just niching down completely and being in one specific niche where you're seeing the same items over and over again because that's what appeals to their personality. So always it is kind of a little bit of a personality thing as well, whatever suits you best. But for me, I like the variety. I like seeing different things. So And it is very interesting and it makes it exciting when uh, you do go out and you do find one of these really, really rare items or something that, I don't know, is attributed or has been in uh, a TV show or something like that, you know, something cool. Or maybe it's been, I don't know, maybe a famous person has wore a T-shirt or something and signed it and you've picked that up. Or I don't know, I'm just making up random examples here, really. But just something cool like that, finding something really different and odd uh, and, and rare like that is, is interesting. And that's the variety, that's the things changing that's the different you're selling different bits and bobs and it is very interesting so next i want you to touch upon this very quickly if you have a disability or mental illness um it may provide a good outlet reselling i'm talking about of course um because of the flexibility of the job you know you can buy things online to flip on if you can't get out the house or or you maybe you can get out the house, but it's challenging for you to get out of the house. So you can only do it here and there and stuff, whether it be that you've got a mental illness like it's depression or anxiety or whatever it may be. Or maybe you've got some sort of uh, disability that you just simply can't get out of the house as much. Um, it's It provides a an outlet to give you at least something in your life to kind of think well I'm doing this I'm feeling positive around it and then that in turn because obviously that could be considered uh, you know especially if you've got anxiety or depression some sort of enabling device to continue on with just staying at home and being anxious or being depressed but in fact that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is actually trying reselling or trying to do that with let's say anxiety or depression you then, it, it gives you a bit more positivity and then it makes you feel like you can do more. It makes you feel like you want to get out more because you've maybe uh, gone around the charity shops or gone around car boot and it might have been hard for you to do that because normally you're at home and you're in your safety zone kind of thing. Um, but then you do it once and you get a bit of a buzz for it and it might be hard, it might be a bit scary, uh, it might be a bit anxious, it might be whatever it may be. But you, you feel like you want to do it again. And actually, you'll find in the end, the reselling is the thing that's actually getting you out more, even though you started it as uh, just something to kind of help your anxiety or depression or whatever it may be in the confines of your safety zone or security zone at home or wherever you're kind of the radius of your security zone uh, may be, you know, but it actually then helps get you out of that. You kind of have to put in a little bit of work to, to get yourself out of that, but that's what it did for me, and that's why I can tell you uh, this, because I've had empirical evidence, I've, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm the evidence for, for doing that, essentially, and it, and it really, really helping me. 
And of course, if you've got a disability, you know, aside from mental illness or anything, if you've got a disability, it just help get get you out a little bit more if you can. Uh, maybe you're in a wheelchair or something like that. But if you can, you know, get someone to obviously take you out or whatever it may be, or if you can get out yourself, then brilliant. Um, but it just provides, again, something positive in your life, something different, something new. And when you're finding these new and different items, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like, I don't know whether I should really draw this comparison or not, but I'm going to do it. It's kind of like retail therapy in a way. So, you know, when people go out and they, they like to buy things, they like to... Um, go to, I don't know, clothing shops and stuff and buy buy clothes and all the rest of it. They uh, they get a buzz from that and it makes them feel happy. Now, it's, a, it's an argument in itself whether being materialistic and stuff and buying things and buying material items just to make yourself feel happy is a good thing for your psychological health. I'm, I'm not sure it's... It, I'd, I'd need to look into that more, to be honest, but... Uh, and it is something quite interesting, that, actually. But with reselling, it's retail therapy, but also um, it's kind of good in a way. It's good retail therapy because you're not buying them for yourself specifically, but you're still getting that buzz with buying them. And then you then you obviously can sell them on and you can do the work that's involved with selling them on and then they can get delivered to their new home. And it's, you know, it's nice. There's, there's some element of, I don't know... Uh, positive psychological well-being in that I feel um you know as I say buying things directly for yourself and just hoarding things and doing retail therapy in a traditional sense where you're literally feeling positive and you're buying more things uh for yourself you know sometimes that could have a, a kind of a negative psychological impact because essentially essentially it's like i mean it's not as severe as let's say doing drugs or doing alcohol or anything but what you're doing is you're getting that little buzz from going out and buying these clothes or whatever for yourself and then you're needing to feed that buzz again or feed that addiction um and therefore it's similar to that in in that way um but doing it the way of reselling you're not getting into that kind of trap because you're you're then selling things on and all the rest of it. Of course, you may end up turning into a bit of a hoarder, but that's uh, somewhat a little bit of a reality of the job. But what the best thing to do is trying to keep your stock turning over so that then you don't become too much of a hoarder because I am a bit of a, a hoarder with things, to be honest, at the moment. But I, I don't really necessarily have... Uh, attachment to things too much so I can get rid of things but you do just naturally become a little bit of a an excessive item owner let's say um so next I want to touch upon the non-stop nature of the job the adrenaline buzz um, of almost limitless possibility so you know we touched on this a little bit throughout this podcast but it is kind of non-stop. I mean, if you really look at Reselling for what it is, there's no defined working hours from one day to the next. Literally, if you do Reselling to its fullest extent, and I've done this before, the days blend into one, and you're just going around, and you're like, right, what have I got on tomorrow? Oh, I've got this car boot, and I've got, and then I've got to do this, you know, maybe you're doing YouTube videos, maybe you're not, I'm not sure, but then I've got to do this YouTube video for my haul, um, and then I've got to do this and maybe I've got to do my accounting and oh well I want to list some items so then that means I've got to do my photography and then I want to pack some items and then tomorrow I've got auction viewing so I'm going to do that and, and you see what's happening here is when you're structuring your days like this and things are just coming at you like this uh, literally a month can go by and it's like where the hell has the time gone because you're just loving this kind of non-stop nature and things are coming at you here there and everywhere new opportunities things that are things are happening things are and it really is giving you that buzz it really is giving you that that kind of um rush you know and it feels in those moments in those times when you are really doing it non-stop and some people do this for a long long periods of time and um you know a lot of, there's a lot of kind of um people who are, I won't name names or anything, but, you know, there's a lot of people coming to my mind when I think, oh, yeah, they're doing, they're doing it non-stop kind of stuff, and, and as I say, I've had periods where I've done it with, with such, um, intensiveness, intensive vigor, I suppose, um, and it really does make you feel when you are in those periods of this limitless possibility, as I say, so, um, I mean, it isn't quite limitless possibility, because, 
you can always say that well there's only a certain amount of items on the planet so therefore it's got to there's got to be some limit to it but in the confines of your single kind of small business the vastness and the abundance of stuff out there make you feel as if it is pretty much limitless and it is kind of limitless to the extent of how much you can do in a day and how much you can actually source and all the rest of it anyway so it really is one of those jobs that you can get a lot of buzz from just going out there doing all these things and getting new opportunities and talking to people and finding new contacts and stuff and and really this is the the nature of why we enjoy it as well this this kind of buzz this non-stop uh nature of it so yeah that's that uh, next just wanted to touch on a couple of little things so i'll just mention a few of these quite quickly so working from home uh, usually, I've put in brackets usually because I know there'll be some people who work from an office with reselling, there may be some people who work from a lockup or have lockups and things like that, like myself. Um, so, you know, usually people who are reselling are working from home. So, therefore, that means there's no commute. commute co- com- oh, I'm not going to be able to say that, am I? Commute. Commute. I think that's how you say it, right. Anyway, there's no commute. Um, and also wanted to touch upon the fact that you can wear what you want. Now, of course, in certain regular jobs, you can wear what you want. Um, so, you know, it's not necessarily specific to resign. And it's not necessarily, once you've been resigned for probably a few, a few weeks or something like that, you're kind of used to it anyway. And because I was in, uh, uni before doing resign, of course, I never had a period where I was having to get dressed up in a suit or anything like that. So, it was quite kind of second nature to me. But let's say you've been someone who's been in um, a corporate job or something like that for 10 years or 20 years and then you're you're faced with the the prospect of full-time re-sign, it will actually feel quite nice for for a good few weeks to, oh, I would imagine it would, um, to just be wearing what you want, essentially. So, you know, we obviously we take that for granted now, a lot of us who have been re-signed for, for years and years and years, but it's still quite nice, and it's a nice little bonus to be able to say, well, I, I can wear what I want. Um, and, of course, a huge bonus is the fact there's no commute, and, uh, you know, if you're working at a lockup or, as I say, you're working at an office, there may be a small commute, but normally what uh, savvy resellers will do or savvy businessmen will do is get somewhere fairly close to where they live. So it's not going to, you know, we may even be able to walk there or something um, and that would be quite good. So, yeah, there might not be necessarily a huge commute for, for those people. But even so, I don't think they'd necessarily mind commuting to a job in which they're they're running themselves, you know, their their own business anyway. So, because I certainly wouldn't. It wouldn't be as... um when you when you commute to a job or you commute to uni or college or wherever, it kind of feels like, oh, well, I've got to go here and do this and get told by this person I'm doing this or the rest of it. But when you commute into your own location, your own business, it, it won't feel the same anyway, so... Yeah, just wanted to touch on those very briefly. And, of course, working from home is a huge bonus. It's huge, brilliant, and obviously the flexibility comes in with that, flexible hours and stuff, and uh, the fact that you can take breaks when you want and stuff and have a cup of tea and just, yeah, it's just it's it, it's brilliant, really, that. It is nice. I mean, of course, there are downsides from that. I won't really go into the downsides too much because I, I wanted this to be a what do we enjoy about reselling rather than just all the negative points as well. Um, but, of course, there are some negative points to that, um, such as, um, I suppose, distractions, you know, music and TV and YouTube and all the rest of it and social media uh, that you might not necessarily get at work or most of them you you probably won't get at work. So, yeah, working from home anywhere there. Uh, next one I want to chat about is no boss to order you about. Uh, but also, you must remember to order, se- order yourself about a bit. Um, so, yeah, there is no boss there to say oh, you've got to do this, you've got to do the other. Uh, Sometimes it's nice, let's say you may have a spouse or you may, uh, I don't know, there may be someone in your life that can not necessarily take the role of a boss, but can just be there to kind of ground you and can kind of say, um, oh, well, you know, maybe you should do this or have you looked at this in this way or, um, you know, or maybe just someone there essentially 
not necessarily a direct business partner or anything, but someone within your life who you can chat to about it, who you can bounce ideas off, that sort of stuff. Um, that's always good because I think that we all do need, even even the best entrepreneurs and stuff, need a little bit of that. Maybe they, some people might not admit it, but I think we all do need a little bit of that, a little bit of... Um, kind of uh, someone else there, even if they're not going to be a boss or anything like that. It's someone who's your equal, who you can bounce ideas off, who you can talk to about things, and who can maybe give you a little bit of a, a push at times as well. Um, but yeah, so you do need to give yourself a little bit of work structure. You need to order yourself about a little bit, or things aren't going to get done. So yeah, it's brilliant when you first come into retail and think, yeah, I've got no boss, and how cool is this? Um, but some people, and I was never really the type to do this, I've always been quite focused and quite, you know, happy to work essentially because I enjoy what I do, obviously. Um, but some people may come into it and they might lazy about a little bit or you might think, oh, well, I've not got a boss so I can afford to just, you know, relax a little bit more and be a bit, a bit more laissez-faire with myself essentially. But you really have got to kind of commit yourself and got to order yourself about a little bit and, and define some structure and whether you do this with to-do lists or bullet journals or I don't know scheduling or I've used uh, Google calendars before and I've, I've done all the things in the book basically I've done bullet journaling to a very terrible extent really I've not done all the artistic bullet journaling or, uh, journaling or anything but I've done to-do lists bullet journaling uh, I've done whiteboards and all the rest of it, writing things on whiteboards. I've done, uh, I've wrote pages worth of long-term goals and short-term goals and all the rest of it. I've done, as I say, Google calendars and setting up structure in that way. I've done loads of different things, but the one thing that I come back to all the time is just sit a very, very simple, basic to-do list, and that really does motivate me. So I literally just write down to do literally on a piece of paper that's all you don't know don't you do anything fancy to do and then underline it and then do a little asterisk or do a little i don't know a cross or whatever way you want to do it um and then literally just put listing or list 10 items and then next one packaging next one photograph 10 items or you don't, you don't need to be in any specific order obviously you'll need to do the photography before you do the listing but you know, just do it like that, and then do. Uh, I've got a to-do list here actually from the other day, so I'll just read off a few of a few of the things just to give you an idea. So I've got labeling, and then I've got altering them, and this is how simple it is. It's literally one or two words for me because I don't do any any uh, BS basically. Uh, so labeling, right? I did that. I've took that, ticked that off. Altering them, so go to altering them. I did that. Took yeah, ticked that off. Vlog. That's all I put down. Vlog. Uh, I, I did that when I was in Altrincham, ticked that off. Photography, I did that, ticked that off. Listing, that will have been 10 listings, I assume, at least. Uh, it wasn't from yesterday, this actually. It was from like a week ago, but I thought it was from yesterday. Packaging, I did that, I ticked that off. I uh, put down C. Ryan, who is one of my friends. Unfortunately, I didn't do that, and it's the only one on the list that I didn't do. And this comes back to um, balancing social and business life that we talked about last week. But see, Ryan, I didn't do that. <laughs> Edit car boot vlog. I did that, sure enough. Um, move alti vlog onto computer. So just a little one there. I write down little ones as well. So that was just moving my uh, my vlog, you know, the, the image, not the images, the videos on my phone to my computer. And then putting them in a dedicated folder that I have before I edit them. Uh, and then sort some stuff out that I needed to start, uh, sort in my storage area, so I was sorting that out, so I ticked that off. Edit Alti Vlog, Alt so edit the vlog from Altingham after I uploaded it to my computer. I did that, and then get the parcels out, I just put parcels out, and I did that. So you can see there, the nature of my, my working mentality is do everything that is associated with work, and then you can see the people you want to see in the day, and often it means that I don't see the people I see in the day because I do uh, a lot of work, and I always try and get as much off as possible. Now, at the start of the day, that to-do list was probably about three items shorter. I wasn't going to edit the old Twingham vlog on the same day I was doing it. I don't even think I was going to do... Uh, 
I don't think I was maybe even going to edit the car boot vlog, but then I did that as well. So, you know, you add things to your list as well if you feel like you've got the time, and then, you know, it goes on. But then you tend to get into the thing of, well, I woke up at 6am or whatever, I've been working since then, and it's now 4 o'clock, and now I'm going to... Uh, I remember it was 4 o'clock at the time, actually, when I was sitting down to edit the vlogs. And then I've got that to do. And before you know it, it's 7 o'clock at night. And you're like, bloody hell, what if I... You know, it's, it, it's crazy, really. And that goes back to the non-stop nature of reselling that we were touching upon. And not only reselling, but business in general. Because, obviously, a little bit of YouTube work comes into, into that as well. But, yeah, it, it can get a little bit crazy. So, um, it is sometimes worth... Holding it at the door and, and, and getting to see people as well. But yeah, certainly just try and find something that you that can direct you because you don't have a boss. So so try and find something that can direct you. It doesn't matter what it is. Just find something. Try out all the different things under the, under the sun, all the different things in the book. And you will find something that suits you. Don't go off what other people are doing. I mean, try the things that other people are telling you to try. But don't just go for those things because they've said it's a good idea or anything like that. Go for what works best for you. So, and then, uh, no, I've got two more points actually here, not just one. Uh, the reselling community, making new online friends who also love the job. So, of course, this doesn't tie directly to reselling as a job. But I think what we all enjoy about reselling is also the offshoot of having the reselling community. And it seems now, uh, I wouldn't say now more than ever, uh, I mean, maybe I would. I mean, it does seem like the community is in a really, really good place at the moment. I don't necessarily mean the Facebook community, but certainly the Instagram community is in a really nice place. And to be honest, it's always been in a really nice place, the Instagram community. Um, but it does feel like that to me. And um, it really it feels like everyone's connecting on a great level. And, you know, people are chatting to each other and people are doing all these different posts. And, you know, we're doing stories over there and stuff. And it's just really, really nice. And I, I, I do feel like it is in quite a good place at the moment. And that is an offshoot from Resign. It's an outlet to kind of talk about the job. Um, aside from actually doing the job, it's an outlet to talk about the job to what we could consider your colleagues or, or co-workers or whatever. Um, or just, I don't know, what, there's probably a word for it. Maybe, a, is it acquaintances the right word? It doesn't quite sound like it completely fits, but you know what I mean anyway. The people who who, uh, who are doing this job alongside you, but aren't necessarily your boss or anything like that. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like. And uh, it really is nice and it is very motivating to have that reselling community and talk to people and uh, and... And, you know, possibly see what they're up to and, and kind of discuss ideas and stuff. But but also just to, just to generally talk to them, not only about resign, but also just as another human and someone who is fairly like-minded. Because what I've noticed is a lot of the people I chat to resign-wise, we are quite like-minded individuals. There may be certain different tastes that people have, but generally on the base of it, we can get on quite well. There's a lot of resellers that I get on very, very well with, even on a personal level, uh, you know, aside from chatting about resign and stuff. So, yeah, I think that it's it's just nice. It just really is uh, another enjoyment factor of the job or a branch, an enjoyment factor of a, an offshoot of the job, essentially. Um, and then finally, the last thing I briefly wanted to touch upon was the fact that we enjoy it, uh, and get ready for this, we enjoy it because we enjoy it. And that's really as simple as it gets. I didn't really need to say any of this stuff prior. Um, hopefully people don't think I've wasted the time for 45 minutes. But essentially that's what it boils down to. We enjoy it because we enjoy it. That is that is it. That is the be all and end all. You don't need any of the rest of this. We enjoy it because we enjoy it. We enjoy it because maybe we have certain personality types that lend themselves to being our own boss, uh, having the flexibility, enjoying the uh, productivity side of reselling, doing work. Uh, maybe we're slight workaholics, some of us. 
I'm not sure, um, but we enjoy it because we enjoy it, because we are a certain personality type, um, and because it's for us, essentially. It's the kind of one of the jobs or the job uh, for us. So, yeah, that that's kind of uh, what I wanted to finish on, really. And I think it's been... Uh, I think I've covered most of the things I wanted to cover. I think it's been a fairly good episode. I am thinking that I may have missed out a couple of items because, um, and if you know, if you feel I've missed out a couple of things, then please do drop them down below in the comments because I did actually write this quite quickly before I uh, end up starting this podcast. I, I literally didn't have any notes and I just, you know, spent about 10, 15 minutes writing down these points. So there is, it is a possibility I might have missed something out. Um, but yeah, quite interesting, um, quite happy with that really, uh, obviously next week, as, as I will mention again, the next topic is building a reselling business from the ground up, so if you have any tips for new pe- people, if you have any comments, any questions that you would like me to voice on the podcast, then please do get in touch either by my Instagram or or down below in the YouTube comments. As always, on probably, um, I don't know, probably next Monday or Tuesday, I suppose, I will put out a community post on YouTube, so I'll be looking out for that. Again, just asking for any final comments or questions before I uh, go to do the podcast, uh, just in case anyone would like to, as I say, voice anything on the podcast. So with that being said, thank you very much to all of you that have joined me today, and I hope you got a little bit of listing done while you've listened to this, and I suppose I'll see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys.